Greetings viewers, welcome to your talk show Scaling New Heights. I'm your host Charlotte Hamutenya. Today we are joined with a young Namibian entrepreneur and a consultant, Mr. Nelson Chelos. Welcome Mr. Chelos. Thank you for having me. You are a trade Namibian geoscientist, a project manager, U.S. climate reality train leader, and the 2020 nominee for African Youth of the Year. You are a founding member of a number of consulting firms in Namibia, including Excel Dynamic Solution Private Limited, and you have over seven years of consulting in mining, business development, and research. Your companies have worked with renowned organizations in sectors in Namibia, Zimbabwe, Angola, Lesotho, Uganda, South Africa, Greece, and the USA. Your companies also manage to offer job opportunities and internship to more than 30 graduates and students, thus promoting skill transfer. You are currently offering business mentorship to other African entrepreneurs through the Tony Olumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program you also serve on a committee within the Namibian Chamber of Commerce and Industry that is responsible for the mining sector. Your business ambition was recognized by many local and continental institutions and in the six years of running consulting firms, you received several business leadership awards. Please share with us how did you manage to achieve all this at such a young age and what does all these accolades mean to you? No, no, thank you, thank you very much. I think you, <laughs> you said it all. Um, they mean nothing, at this stage they mean nothing actually, um, other than obviously uh, society um, uh, perhaps appreciating what we have started doing. Uh, we have not achieved yet what we want to achieve um, in terms of our goals um, and, and, and our visions. Um, but yeah, clearly there is, a, there is something that we are doing uh, in, in, in the business area and obviously in our um, journey to transform Africa that um, other people and entities are recognizing. Um, so yeah, in short, that is really what it means. It means uh, you wake up, you do what you have to do, uh, and it affects the next person, and they appreciate it, and they say, wow, thank you, uh, here is a certificate, or, you know, here is a recognition. Um, and sometimes it's really just for inspiration. It's not necessarily that whoever is recognizing you in that manner is, is um, uh, wow by what you do, but they are saying, look, if you look at this guy, um, there's an opportunity that you can learn one or two things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you said you do it for inspiration. So, are you saying that even if people are not recognizing, it's fine, you are just inspiring? 100%. I mean, uh, the first thing you need to understand is that we, when we do what we do, consulting work, um, uh, in mining, uh, in um, other sectors such as water, um, other sectors such as business development. Uh, when we do what we do, we, we do not do it for recognition. Mm -hmm. As a business, obviously, you do it for, for income okay. so that uh, you can expand. Uh, but obviously, with good work um, and value creation comes recognition. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's just uh, to say you are doing well, keep doing it. Um, and then obviously the rest of the society is inspired in some ways. All right, um, Mr. Nelson, please take us mm -hmm. through your background. Should we suggest that your background has contributed to the person that you are today? Hundred percent. So I so I did geoscience at, at the University of, of of Namibia, and then on top I did a few short courses. Mm -hmm. um, I was also busy with my master's in uh, geoinformation. 
Um, but I think what geoscience did to me is that it gave me a perspective of the space we live in. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the universe. That, you know, Earth as a planet is just a very small uh, body in a rather big universe that, um, that we live in. And, and what happened really is that I started looking at things from with that perspective. That, you know, for instance, a small problem, mm -hmm. I mean, a problem may appear big to the people I'm engaging. Uh, I look at it as just a small piece of um, something that can be solved. Because I have, I, I always look at things from a, a universe perspective. And therefore, what that means is even when we are doing business, we compete with big corporates. You know, who have been there in, in the industry for 50 years, they have 500 employees. One would look at that and say, wow, I need to be scared, we must do what... I look at them as the same size as us. Um, just perhaps doing things right, which we should then do. Uh, and then we, we have every, um, what, every benefit they have to secure their deal. Okay, Mr. Chelos, mm -hmm. um, can you also take us through your journey of when you finished your studies? Yes. What happened? How did you become this entrepreneur that you are today? Uh, good question. So what happened is, like any other graduate, mm -hmm. oh, obviously we were writing emails. So our graduation year was not um, the best in terms of obviously the economy and job opportunities. So we were writing emails, or I was writing emails like any other graduate. Um, and opportunities were not coming through. So, um, you know, I got a bit worried and I was really willing to take any opportunity that would come my way. Um, but on top of that, I always had something while at the university that um, I think it was a misplacement to for for say our mentors and, and, and lecturers to say if you don't do well uh, you struggle to get a job mm -hmm. right yes. um, and then you come back to the industry there's a notion that at least 10 years of experience or something like that to to be able to get a good uh, opportunity so what then I realized before I, I obviously moved on to, to what I explained now is that it looked like everyone was looking at it from just a mere effect of getting a job, mm -hmm. but not creating a job for yourself. Okay. But you know, going just a step back, so when the struggle was real and, and I couldn't get an opportunity, so I ended up uh, um, on an attachment in the desert. We were on a um, sort of a six-month research program, um, and it's some ecological uh, work, you know. I mean, here you are dealing with beetles and lizards and, you know, some geckos, as a geoscientist, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but what that did really gave me a perspective and an understanding of detailed science uh, and research. So I could understand why scientists argue in a certain way. And, uh, I think coming back to the business is really that it also opened up an opportunity that I saw while I was there, is that Namibia as a whole has a, quite a huge gap uh, in the data science area. So we used to receive several uh, researchers from all over the world, and the first thing they would tell you is that we are struggling to get access to certain information. And while there, so I then, some two colleagues that I had then, we decided to establish a data collection company. So we, we managed to assist whoever has a need to collect data. Um, and we used that to penetrate into the sector that we know, which is geoscience, mining, and, and so on. So it was really just a strategy to find an entry point into a market where... Um, let, me, let me come in there. 
Mm. Um, there you were, you were doing your internship, mm. you sent emails that people never responded. Yeah. So what was your key driving force to become an entrepreneur? Um, at that point, I'll, I'll be honest with you, is lack of opportunities um, that meet my expectations. Uh, but more so, I think it, it was really, I started understanding the potential, um, even at the local level, Namibia. Um, you know, I, I speak of Africa in all my conversations, so at the local level, I started to understand the opportunity, because then I was also doing a bit of research on who owns our mines, you know, who owns all these exploration projects, and it, it's... The focus was always around, you know, we need some foreign input, we need some foreign investment. And I was, I was really at the point where I was like, you know what, it, it, it's because we have given up, you know, we have all decided to go one route, which is, let's get a job. Yes. So I just wanted to try something different. And uh, I don't know if it still works as I expected, but Obviously, we are heading somewhere okay. at this point, yeah. Uh -huh. um, what is your favorite aspect of being an entrepreneur? I mean, like you're an 85, yeah. now you're an entrepreneur. What is your favorite aspect? Um, the best that I always, I always share with my friends is that of being... Uh, number one is fearless. Number two is that of not, you know, hearing... Uh, the, the, of, of running away from the negative energy. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the other way to put it is really that of not hearing people complaining. Mm, um, I explain it in a way that um, when, as an entrepreneur, and, and I'm speaking now about myself, when for instance I receive a call and the first word from the person is, why didn't you, why this and that, I, you know, I, I put the phone somewhere and to wait for you to finish, then maybe, if you are lucky, then I will come in and say, you know what, um, let's see how we can solve this. So that's really the, the beauty of being an entrepreneur, is that you, you don't hear negative stuff mm -hmm. unless you can create a solution to that. Um, so every complaint, every uh, placard that someone is carrying in the street is an opportunity for an entrepreneur. Really. So basically you are saying you take all the challenges and turn them into opportunities? Yes, because whoever is complaining, what they, what they are not saying, which is really the case, is that I need your help. Mm -hmm. And you as an entrepreneur, it's, it's, it's for you to pick up that demand. It's a demand that requires a solution. And you know the beauty of it is that you charge for it actually, okay. you know, eventually. Mr. Nelson, do you believe there is some sort of pattern or formula to become a successful entrepreneur? Or can I just wake yeah. up and then tomorrow I'm an entrepreneur? I think so. Uh, I think so, but uh, there is no clear pattern. But there, there has to be a drive, mm -hmm. there has to be courage. Um, but most importantly, I think there has to be a problem to be solved. Um, the unfortunate part is that we are all running away from problems mm -hmm. as opposed to facing them and you know trying to figure out what the solution would be. Uh, but I also, when it comes to defining who could be an entrepreneur, I look at it from the two worlds, mm -hmm. the developed and the developing. And I think in our context as Africa, um, my opinion is that to become successful, you really have to do to give everything you have. It's you know the system is not set up for you with beautiful colors. Computers are already there. Water is running all the time. Mm -hmm. No, it's not like it. Funding is not there. So you have to scratch. You have to eat slices of bread for a year or longer. Yes, um, Mr. Chelos. You know, in today's business, you get to see customers not going back to the businesses, mm. um, businesses closing down, mm. or having these um, 
not so good relationship between the business and the customers. Yes. Please tell us how do you how did you manage to build a successful customer base? It, it was easy for us. So at, at the start, we already knew we were going to struggle mm -hmm. if if we make every engagement about us. If 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 just to explain, so how we engage our clients. Um, and our potential clients, those we have not secured yet, is really that we we try to understand their pain points, mm -hmm. we try to understand the future they are chasing, um, and then we become part of the, the family, basically. So we come in and we say, you know what, we can help you to take you from point A to point B, right? Um, along the way we are together, and when they see these results, obviously they they appreciate you more. And you know when you are appreciated, people talk about you, yes. you know, wherever they are. So that's how slowly we we really managed to build uh, the client uh, the, the clientele um, th that we have. But also, I think most importantly is that we we were not always dealing with these guys for money. So there are many cases where we said, you know what, we can do this for you, pay whenever you you have the means. And I, I can't tell you how excited they get. And then obviously they preach uh, about you to all their connections and networks. So you also use that as a marketing strategy for your business? Yeah, very much. I, I If I get one client, I have to make sure that you know, through him I get to tell. It's you. I mean, that's. I think that's the challenge also with small businesses, especially is that they, they, they acquire a client. Number one, they do a bad service, and then if they do a good service, they don't find the rooms to to keep the client. You know, and mm -hmm. that's very important for a small business that you retain the client, and let him also connect you to five more. And that's really how you grow in today's world. Okay. What entrepreneurial tricks have you discovered to keep you focused and productive in your day-to-day -day busy schedule? Now, that's that's a good question. Um, I don't think I have clear tricks. I try to focus on um, what is important. And um, as a business leader, what is important is one that whatever is bringing in income, uh, two is whatever is keeping stakeholders um, um, happy, um, and three, whatever has to do with uh, value creation, because that's what we are about. So if I get the whole list of activities for the day, so I then draw up the table, is it, is it important, an agent, um, and if it's just agent uh, but it doesn't serve the purpose of why we are in business, then obviously, obviously it has to wait. So I, yeah, I put everything uh, on, on a matrix basically to see, it has to be very important, um, agent would mean uh, Agent also in return, um, if, if, if we submit it and it brings in money in, in that, with that level of agency, then, then we should do it. If it's just agent because someone somewhere out there is suffering um, and it doesn't have anything to do with um, what we really need to achieve in the defined period of time, then it has to wait. So that's really how I look at it. Um, and then obviously cut out all the other, that, that's me now, all the other social stuff. Um, I just realized, given our background, obviously as an African, you have so many friends, relatives, and, and so many things that are surrounding you. So you then need to disappoint people here and there uh, for the sake of the business and the colleagues that you work with. Because if there is no income, who look at each other with hungry faces. Yeah. So yeah. It's so true. Yeah. Mr. Nelson, you are so vocal on your social media and I also believe that you are taking 
an mm -hmm. opportunity to um, speak your mind and also maybe mm -hmm. to market your business. Yes. And we have selected a few statements from your post. Can you please share with us what you mean by these statements and I'm going to, that I'm going to read to you. The first one is Africa is waiting. Africa is waiting. My favorite. Um, well, it means um, if you look at the projected population of Africa by 2050, we are talking about 2.5 billion uh, people. Um, if you look at the current state st statistics, um, 2021, there are about 500 million of, of, of people on the continent who don't have access to electricity. Mm -hmm. That's half a billion. Uh, for your information, uh, there are over 300 million people without access to uh, clean water. And, um, you know, almost about 400 million also of, of people who are really in extreme poverty. You know what extreme poverty means? You, you, you wake up, you look around and you can't even get a piece of bread. Uh, and you don't have options, that's the worst part. So now, here comes a few uh, individuals who have access to you know, the, the basic needs. Mm -hmm. So what I'm telling them is that, you know, that's fine, it's okay to, to have access to these basic needs and to feel like, you know, I'm sorted, I've worked so hard, I was at the university. But think about that half a billion. That, that is really, I mean, in darkness. Um, think about 400 million of, of people who can't drink water unless they go to some river and where they are drinking is also where kettles and everything is happening. So Africa is waiting is to say, if the population is going to get to 2.5 billion uh, and we are already struggling with 1.3 billion, we cannot be doing things the way we used to do them. So we need to wake up, we need to put in extra effort because I'm speaking now in the future, uh, that 2.5 billion people are waiting and they are saying, please help us. And that can be only be me and you who are aware now of the situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what do you have to say to those who are waiting for aid from um, European countries or any other countries, what do you have to say to those who are waiting? Are you? Uh, it's it sad. It's sad. Uh, look, we have been receiving aid since when? Since I don't know. Mm -hmm. It has not changed the situation. It's, it's, it's really like someone who is just about receiving but never concerned about where the things are coming from. So which means when you have used up what you have received, but you can't figure out where it came from, you all you have to do is to beg again. And the other guys obviously are not giving us aid just because they like us. Mm -hmm. Otherwise they would not have colonized us if we were friends. Um, they are giving us aid in exchange of our raw materials, um, in exchange of our land, everything basically. Um, and those are the resources you need to develop your people and to improve their lifestyle. It's not necessarily that you should always get help outside. Uh, if they have done it, we can do it. Okay. Another statement, mm -hmm. I get hammered when saying unemployment is solvable in one day if people can learn to become drivers than waiting passengers. Yes, so, so I have colleagues and you know, I'm, I'm happy that I'm given the platform to, to say this. So I have colleagues and for instance one walks in and say, what, what do I do? So the philosophy is clear, is that you, you need to figure out what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Because what happens if, if Chelos gets bumped tomorrow? Do we close the business or do we continue operating? So what I mean is, is if, if even graduates, I mean you have been at varsity for four years, come on. I mean you are not there eating apples and, and bananas, you are, you are learning. 
and clearly you have something that you can bring to the table mm -hmm. that we can use to generate income. So what I mean is I have seen, having worked with so many graduates, um, the, the perception is that when they come, they need to be fed, yes. right? They need to be fed with knowledge and so on and so on. These things don't exist. You know, you, you must come there and say this, how about we do it this way? Because in that manner, it means you have 10 people all going out to look for work, as opposed to a single person from the whole team of 10 people going out there and looking for work um, to feed 10 people, if you understand what I mean. Yes. And, and the thing is, the more you can get, this is now opportunities for the business, mm -hmm. the more we are able to expand. And when with expansion comes more opportunities, then you can pull in five more graduates. So in short, really I'm saying, if, 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 if these guys can learn a culture of becoming creators, mm -hmm. within a setup, we are not saying start a business, but the business we are joining, can you come in and create more opportunities for the guys who are living outside? Yes. Then we can reduce that number mm -hmm. quite significantly. Yeah. Maybe it's also a mindset that we need to change in the graduates. Yeah. That you do not have to be a dependent when you go out there, but you mm. should be a creator. So that hundred percent. Because um, you go to varsity four years, and when you are done, you want to be employed at a certain company. Maybe mm. it's a mindset that we need to change in our graduates that we can also be creators. Hundred uh, percent. For instance, me when I get time to look at CVs, I say I would prefer someone who is just writing one sentence, this is what I will contribute, as opposed to, I worked where, 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 because that is not helping us. No, you know. but is that not one of the requirements? You went 10 years, so I need to tell you where I worked. Yeah, that's the requirement with other people and other businesses. We, our key requirement at our business is that you must be very passionate about the development of Africa. Okay. Because when you are passionate about something, you can easily drive it mm -hmm. without anyone, you know, watching. Um, yeah, and, and that's really our key requirement. Okay. Real entrepreneurs are expanding and increasing salaries when many are complaining about the economy and pandemic. Mm -hmm. That's another statement. Yeah, and my favorite also is, is really to say <laughs> business is about value, right? And one thing I saw with, with now the COVID pandemic is that uh, people are at home, uh, what are they doing? They're just complaining. If some smart guy can come up with a way of, you know, solving these problems mm -hmm. for these people who are at home, uh, he will be coining, he will be, you know, pocketing a lot of money. and. What do you do if you have five people helping you on that? You say, you know what, looks like we have a very good opportunity here. I'm going to increase your, your salary or your wage by another 20%. I asked this to a few friends that, do you really think at this point with COVID and so on, um, the likes of Facebook owners and a few other, obviously online businesses, are, are, are reducing salaries or retrenching. There is no way because how many hours are people spending on WhatsApp and Facebook just complaining? Not knowing that they are actually complaining and paying to be there mm -hmm. because it's a platform which is not for free. So those guys are uh, earning quite a lot. But also, um, lastly on that one, is, is to say if you look at I don't know if it's true, but I had, I just learned that, you know, now that people are working from home, the consumption is quite heavy, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's two minutes and you need something to buy it again. So if you venture into those food, you know, um, maybe the meals, businesses, you can coin it, you know. It's, it's, it's a big opportunity because right now people are just like, I don't know what's going on. Please help me, please help me. And every please help me is worth $10, so why don't you collect it? Okay. Mm.
according to the doctors, we are supposed to sleep eight hours. But Mr. Shellos, according to you, we cannot afford to sleep eight hours. What do you mean by that statement? Uh, I just mean, I, one is, I don't know where the eight hour came from. Obviously, you mentioned doctors. I know they, they themselves don't work for, for eight hours because I have a couple of friends mm -hmm. who receive calls at weird hours such as 2 a.m. Um, but the other thing is, I think, I think we, we are forgetting where we are as, as a continent. Mm -hmm. um, I kid you not, but most of our raw materials from this continent are shipped during our sleeping hours, right? Mm -hmm. um, I work with people from a few countries that are not on the continent. Uh, what I mean is I cannot be sleeping when they are sending emails and they need my help. And normally, because of time differences, uh, they are waking up, then I must go to bed. So I have to wait for that to be sorted um, so that um, at least I, you know, I manage to, to do business with them. But lastly on that one is really to say, we, as, as Africa and as Namibia, you know, we are, we are still trying to develop, to, to catch up with the developed world. Yes. There is no way that we can do things at the same pace as the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. We have to put in additional hours, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. if, if, because, I, I mean, you are using what? To, to, to cut the tree, you are using an axe, the other guy is as a cutting machine, yes. you know? Maybe to, to get to Valdez by, you are driving on the road, it takes you five hours, the other guy is flying. It's, it's 30, 30 minutes. So basically, that notion is really coming from the fact that we are still in the development um, stage with regards to the rest of the world, and therefore we have to put in extra. It's really a question of extra. And I mean, you only have 24 hours. If, if you are sleeping eight, that's how much of your whole day. Plus, you also need to be in the kitchen, then you must take kids where, where, then you must drive. So you eventually have only worked for four hours, which is not enough. Yeah. Okay. Straight from university, you mm -hmm. do not have a profile that is attractive to industries. It is your responsibility to work tirelessly on the profile as soon as you enter the market. 100%. I mean, I mean, you know, that may be confusing with if you look at what I said earlier that you have been to the university for four years and you should know what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. But what I mean is, you know, there are certain ways of doing things in the industry because forget, <laughs> I know governments are normally saying, you know, please employ our people so that, you know, they don't complain and things like that. But, you know, industries are all about profit for expansion and you know, obviously to open up some new other markets. Now, when you come there, they, they expect you to be at a certain uh, stage, or they at least expect you to fit in, mm -hmm. you know, right? Because you have to fit in, because they have a model that they use to produce a certain product or service so that they can sell it. Um, so what I mean there is the profile is not there, yet because you are coming from a university which is academic mm -hmm. but it's your responsibility now to figure out how things are done yes. if you are going to wait for for an opportunity to enter that may take you two years and that's why you have i mean namibia youth i think they spoke about 70 percent or something unemployment mm -hmm. because they are also not willing to study the market. They are only willing to introduce themselves through CVs that here I am, I'm unemployed. But is, was there ever a time when you walked into someone's office and tell them about what they do more, in a way that they may think, ah, you know more than I do? Because that's really what you have to do. Uh, there is no shortage of opportunities. Mm -hmm. There is shortage of right people. Okay. We can fit in the puzzle. Mm -hmm. yeah. What business-related books has inspired you in your journey? 
A couple, but my favorite is, is called The Frecas. It's, um, it speaks about how some, some folks in, in America uh, managed to, to light up America. Mm -hmm. So America used to be a net importer for, for electricity power and so on. And these guys, you know what, what is interesting, they were not engineers, they were not geoscientists. Uh, they were just some very passionate guys. So they went against the advice from experts to believe and to strongly um, yeah, uh, revolutionize um, the lighting and, and the power in, in America. And at this point, America is a net exporter, so I, I just feel like they had the energy um, and the courage and they did not listen much uh, from experts. Because the problem with experts is they, they think within a certain framework. And if things are not fit, fitting in that framework, then they discard, they say it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you were to write a book about yourself, how would you name it? Uh, since I love Africa, since, I mean, that's that's really, I wake up every morning and I'm singing about her, I would perhaps uh, name it. So this is me now, um, Africa's boyfriend. Uh, Africa's boyfriend. And, and I think I wanted to just say a word or two there, because uh, also one thing I picked up with um, our youth, you know that Africa is about, I think so over 70% or so, is 60% to 70% is people under the age of 25. That topic of girlfriend and boyfriend is fascinating to them. I'm sure they would want to read it. That's a good strategy. Yeah. African boyfriend. Okay. Um, I believe that everyone at one point we become fearful. Mm. So um, what is your greatest fear and how do you manage fear? Um, brilliant question. My fear is really to... I, I, I'm, I'm scared to obviously not achieve the big dreams that I have for the continent. But the biggest worry that I have is whether uh, we will ever get to a point where as Africans uh, are speaking a common language. And this is not English, Africans, uh, Swahili, but yes. A language where, for instance, we have Agenda uh, 2063, mm -hmm. which is really um, looking at, you know, getting a prosperous Africa where people have equal access to resources, everyone is smiling, you know, I'm welcome at your place. I have a few worries that that will, may not happen, but it also gives me courage. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a bit scared when I'm looking at it and I'm like, so how do we get here? Because of obviously a few struggles that I'm already having on the continent. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's also a motivation that it means there is so much to be done. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Nelson, before I leave you, what is your final advice to the young people out there? Um, brilliant. You know what? It's, it's very difficult. Um, to to give, I learned it's very difficult to give advice to someone who is not open to accepting, because otherwise, um, you know, it doesn't really make much of a difference. But you know, I think what I can say really is that, um, other than you know, complaining and looking at government to give opportunities. Um, I think we have to get to a point where we look inward and realize that being about 70% of, of the continent's population, we can only be the drivers of change. Um, um, so, and this is really not about becoming entrepreneurs because that's where the confusion normally comes in. When you are an entrepreneur and you speak about people must change, they think, you know, you are saying they must start businesses, but it's really just to to be proactive in whatever they do, whatever they are involved in. And that could be you as an employee, mm -hmm. um, taking ownership, taking uh, accountability, 
Um, but more importantly, I think we need to slow down on on, on, on social aspects. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know why I have a strong feeling about that, but um, I want I want us, you know, the other day I was asking, I, I can imagine a, a country where it, somehow it happened with COVID now and regulations where, you know, young people on weekends are meeting to discuss progressive things, you know, such as how do we build a new road, or how do we come together and construct a clinic, as opposed to meeting and chatting about other things that I don't want to mention here. So the responsibility is ours. The Africa is waiting perspective or notion that I'm talking about is is I'm not saying this to to our grannies and the, the the elders who have already some have already fought for, for independence, but I'm saying this to the people who who have the energy and should be encouraged to, to take on the the fight. Yeah. So yeah, there is there is no time to sleep basically. Mr. Chalos, thank you for joining us today. I know you are a busy person. Thank you for joining us and sharing your business knowledge. It's a pleasure and uh, yeah, I wish our viewers um, all the best of luck in whatever they do. And let's work together. To our viewers out there, until we meet again, goodbye.